Hello there, you're watching Dansky and this is the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a fire effect composite in Adobe Photoshop. So let's jump into it. You can see on screen an example of what we're going to be creating, taking a subject and using several different images to combine them together to just create this awesome man on fire effect. So we've got an image of a man or our subject, we have some fire and some flames and some molten lava. So anything fire related is all good for this tutorial. And I've also created a new document, 2000 pixels wide and 2000 pixels high. And I'm going to set the background to black by selecting the paint bucket tool. And from the color picker, just pick black from the very bottom left corner and then left click anywhere on the canvas to fill it with that color. Next, what we're going to do is grab all of our images and get them into our main document. So we can go up to select down to all and you'll see the marching ants appear and we can then go to edit, copy, switch back over to our main tutorial PSD and go edit and paste. And you can see that's a very high res image there. So let's just go ahead and quickly do the same for all of those images and we can scale them down in a moment. So let's just go through each of these images. We'll zoom out there and go to edit, free transform. And the shortcut for that is command or control T. And we can hold shift and just left click and drag from one of the corners and scale this down. And we'll put him right in the center and just bring him down a bit. It doesn't matter that this photo, his head is cut off because as you saw in the example, we're going to be replacing the top of his head with fire and flames. So again, we're just going to do that same edit free transform option and just scale down our fire. And the same lastly for our molten lava. And in fact, we can hide all of the fire layers for now. We're going to start work on our subject first. Now, if you have a subject against a lighter background, you may want to spend a bit more time cutting them out. And I've got lots of other videos linked below in the Photoshop playlist if you're looking to cut out a subject from a background. However, for this tutorial, if your subject is on a dark background, because we're using a black background as well, it's going to make it all the more easier. So actually, for this step, I can add a layer mask. And in fact, I'm just going to double click and name all of these layers just so I don't get confused. So let's call this fire and we'll call this molten lava. So with the subject selected, I'm going to click on the layer mask and just select black as my foreground color and the brush tool. And we can pick one of Photoshop's nice default feathered brushes here. And as I say, because the subject is on a dark ish background and we're working with a black background, we can just feather this away nice and quickly and we don't need to finesse the edge too much because what we're going to be doing is adding fire flames and a whole bunch of chaos so any kind of imperfections in cutting this out isn't going to be as noticeable in this composition so let's just quickly go around and soften that edge and of course please do take a lot more time when uh, when you're doing your one Okay, so there we go. We've very, very quickly just separated our subject onto the background and you can hold shift and left click on the mask to see the original image or you can drag the mask to the bin if you want to get rid of it and start again. Okay, so we've got our subject on the black background. Next, we're going to go to the adjustments icon from the bottom of the layers panel and go to gradient map. And if we click anywhere on the gradient slider, and we can just pick one of the defaults at the top. We're going to be using red, so this is perfect. And we're going to double click on the green here and just pick a yellow, nice, bright, vibrant yellow. So we've got red through to yellow. And then what we can do is set this gradient map to overlay. And there we go. So we've kind of applied a very fire-esque kind of glow to our subject. Now we'll leave that set at 100% for now, but we might tone that down a bit later on. Okay, so now we can actually go back to our subject on the layer mask 
and we can again use black just to <laughs> remove the top part of his head. In fact, we can probably remove a bit more of this, like this. Try and do it, it'll go for like a nice, uh, nice sort of curve there to kind of follow the contours of his forehead, something like that. It doesn't need to be perfect because now we're going to switch on our fire layer. And this is pretty, uh, pretty crazy. So again, we'll go to edit, free transform, hold shift and scale this down. We now need to line up the flames with where we want them to appear on his head. So I think probably about here. So we can double click to set that transformation once we're happy with the size. And if we add a layer mask to this, in fact, we could hold alt when we add our layer mask and it will hide everything, which is really helpful. And then of course we can use white and click OK. And if you're wondering what this ginger is talking about with brushes and layer masks, then I'll link a video up, up somewhere on the screen now that's all about working with masks. And I definitely recommend it because it's just so helpful. OK. So now we can just use that same feather default brush to just brush in some of the fire. So we've got the fire and the cinders. Uh, let's just brush that in like so. So we don't want to brush too far out here because of course that's completely irrelevant, but we're just gonna keep it around the head. And we're actually going to, with the fire layer selected, change the blending mode from normal to screen. So you can see it just blends a little bit more seamlessly with the top of the head. And we can of course go back to our subject mask. And again, just remove some of that or even add some back in. So the step here is really about trying to blend. So I'm just single left clicking just to blend the fire and the head together as seamlessly as possible. And of course, if you do get any bits of fire like this around the edge that don't add up, just gently brush away those hard edges and then switch back to the subject mask and just brush away any sort of stray bits around the hair. So there's a lot of working with layer masks and a lot of jumping backwards between one mask, so the fire, and then the subject mask, just to try and get these to blend together as seamlessly as possible. Okay, so we've got the fire there. We're now going to right click on the fire layer and select duplicate layer, click OK. And we'll drag this one underneath and we'll go and call this layer fire face. And we can delete the layer mask actually. And if we hide our other fire layer, because what we're going to do is use some of the kind of tips of the flames and the cinders to add some texture to the face. So again, if we hold alt and left click on the layer mask icon and with white as our foreground color and our soft feathered brush, we're going to brush in some texture over the face there. If I zoom in a bit more, there we go. Now it's probably a good time for me to select that gradient map and we'll drop that opacity down. So we can go back to zero and slowly bring this up. So I think 100% is probably a little bit too strong, but if we go for something around 60% for now, and of course I don't want to hide all of the eyes completely. There we go, so just brushing in some extra detail and we can try switching up the blending mode just to see what other <laughs> kind of effects that we can create. So I think we'll stick with screen here. So we've got our main fire layer for the head and then we've got some extra fire detail on the face. Now we're going to switch on our molten lava layer and we'll probably scale this down a little bit, I think. And again, we can add a layer mask by holding alt and left clicking and it will hide everything. And again, using white and that soft feathered brush, we're going to brush in some lava. Now this is uh, obviously looking quite terrible, but if we change the blending mode to overlay, you can see it really does blend in. I mean, we can try screen, see how that looks. That's probably a bit better. So usually just experimenting with the different blending modes, uh, trying to figure out how two layers with different colors and everything can all blend together as effectively as possible. And again, I'm going to bring the opacity down 
I just really want to kind of add some subtle texture here. So we don't want this to be too pronounced. Let's bring that down to 40. And I'm going to duplicate the molten lava layer by right clicking and selecting duplicate. And I'm going to move this down to his neck. And I'm going to probably drop the opacity down a bit more. And with the layer mask selected and black as my foreground color, I can just brush around any texture that strays out onto his clothing. So we've just got a little bit of subtle texture on the neck, just so we've not completely done loads of work on the face and then nothing on the neck at all. So let's have a look. That's looking pretty good, I think. So you can see the composite start to come together. We can now go back to our fire layer. Now we've got everything set up and this is really the part of the process where you want to kind of fine tune and refine. So let's go back to our subject again. We're just going to jump between layers, maybe increase that brush size. You can increase or decrease the size of your brush quickly in Photoshop with the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. And also you can drop the opacity and we're really just going to work on that blend between the top of the head and the flames. So what I'm doing is just single left clicking quite a lot and just switching between black and white down here in the color picker just so I can quickly brush into and out of the mask layer for the subject. And then it's really a case of just playing around with all of the different layers, the balance, the opacities. And if you want at the end, you can add a new adjustments layer for curves. And then you can adjust the curves to kind of get the right lighting effect that you're going for. Or you can use one of the presets here. So like linear contrast, for example, that's probably quite subtle. Let's try medium contrast. So you can see that's the layer off and the adjustment layer back on just adds a little bit more contrast to the image and makes it a little bit more dramatic. And there we go. That's how to create a fire effect composite in Adobe Photoshop. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.